Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's having a good Super Bowl Sunday. Go Chiefs. Um, I had a subscriber that wanted me to go through the electrical system on one of these QH12s. I would assume most of these are going to be pretty much the exact same. So I'll just go through this one. I wanted to do a long video that really went into depth on these, but it's freezing cold out here today and my hands are numb and it's hard to work on these things with numb hands so i decided just to do a short video go through the entire electrical system maybe point out some things that are usually issues that people have and help you diagnose your issues yourself save some money save some time just a little backstory for people who think i'm doing this for self-promotion or whatever um I'm literally just making these to help people out. I grew up my whole life fixing stuff on my own. Saved a lot of money. Helped a lot of buddies out. Helped family out. So I think it's a good skill to have. I do have a four year degree in this stuff too. And for the past 25 years, I've been working on everything under the sun, so. Anyways, with anything electrical, it's always good to start at the source, being your battery. Unfortunately, I don't have enough hands, so I have the ground wire to my multimeter. It's going to be constantly connected to the ground on the battery, so you know that. This is a cheap multimeter. That's probably like 12, 13 bucks. You can get them anywhere. I have a more expensive one, a very expensive one actually, but uh, it doesn't work anymore. So we're gonna use this cheap one just to show you that you can do this stuff with things that don't cost very much. So we'll start at the source here at the battery. It's a standard 12 volt battery. Uh, when it comes from China, they have the cover zip tied on, which is a good thing, but it's very hard to get off. So uh, for instance here, I'm not going to be using this terminal at all. I was able to pull the ground up, so I'm connected to that, but um, just to simply see what the battery voltage is. I've got it set on DC volts and I'm gonna go, if you follow the lead off of the battery, straight to the starter solenoid right there you can see where it hooks up and it will have constant 12 volts right there 12.53 now that we know that the battery has 12.53 volts i'll show you how uh, the shutoff switch the main power shutoff switch on this works the ground cable for the battery comes back out under here comes up to the main shutoff switch you can see the other side of that comes off right here and that bolts to the side of the engine. So that's where you're getting your main ground. Your battery is not grounded when this is on off. You put it in the on position, makes a connection between these two posts, then it sends this ground from the engine to the battery and you now have a ground to your chassis. Turn your engine shutoff switch on you send a ground to the chassis to your battery that completes the circuit. Now you have a live 12 volt circuit. Now that we covered that, we'll move on to the starter solenoid. That would be the next thing in line. And you can see a live 12 volt feed comes off of that, off of your battery, straight to the starter solenoid. The way that a starter solenoid works is you have two posts. One of them, the one you're looking at that is bare, that's the 12 volt feature trait from the battery. So that is always hot. So really it'd be a good idea to have that rubber cover over it. Don't know why it's not, but if you look behind it right there, you can see the black rubber cover on the other post. That post, the cable comes off of it and it goes directly to your starter, which is right there. The starter is right here. That cable comes through, come on, focus, connects to the starter right here. How many times have you had a buddy or somebody, or even yourself, trying to diagnose a bad starter? You turn the key on, turn it to start, nothing happens, or you just get clicks. So you go posting on a forum or something, asking if you have a bad starter, if your engine's locked up, you have a bad connection. Well, there's a very easy way to test that. The way that that starter solenoid works is you have a constant 12 volt feed that you're looking at right there from the battery. If you look on the other side, there is a black rubber cap. That post goes straight to your starter motor. So there is never 12 volts going through this 
straight to your starter. The only time that happens is the gray wire that you can see exposed with the green cap on it. That is your 12 volt signal wire from your start switch. So when you turn your key, not to the run position, but when you're starting it, that sends 12 volts through the gray wire down to the starter switch. And when that signal wire has 12 volts going through it, it completes the connection in the starter solenoid, sending your constant 12 volt feed out through the black covered post down to the starter motor, which sends 12 volts to your starter. It's mounted directly to the engine, so it gets its ground through the metal. Knowing that, assuming whenever you turn the key, if your solenoid is working, it will send 12 volts to the starter. How many times have you or one of your buddies had an issue where you turn the key and you either get a click or nothing happens at all? You've tested your battery, you have 12 volts, but you're not getting the engine to turn over. Well, if you have that issue, one of the one of the causes could be this signal wire not getting 12 volts to the solenoid, which act activates it and sends 12 volts to the starter. Uh, the other issue could be your starter motor is worn out and is hung up or your engine is locked up, unfortunately. Um, to test that, the first thing I would do is pull that gray wire off, put it on DC volts, connect your positive lead to that gray wire and you will see 12 volts while you are trying to crank, crank the engine. If the gray wire checks out okay for sending 12 volts while you're cranking, then you know that it should be activating the solenoid. So the next thing you can do is pull the black cover off of the other post, hold your positive lead to it, obviously connect the ground to a ground, crank the engine, and if you are not getting 12 volts to that post, but you know you have 12 volts coming through the gray signal wire, then you know that your solenoid is not working and it needs to be replaced. However, if you are getting 12 volts there, then you know that it is sending 12 volts to your starter. In that case, you would come back here to your starter and check the positive lead coming to it for 12 volts. If you're getting 12 volts there, then your starter motor is bad or hung up or your engine is locked up. Obviously on these, they have a pull start. So if you have that issue and you wanna know if your engine's locked up, you can just pull the pull start. If your engine turns over, then you know that your problem is a bad starter motor. Also, if you look at the post that is a constant 12 volt feed from the battery you see the red cable coming off of it coming to this connector here that is going into your regulator rectifier your regulator rectifier is located right here all a regulator is is exactly what the name of it is it regulates the charging voltage being sent to your battery so you don't want your battery overcharging typically on these you'll see somewhere between 13 probably 13 and a half to 14 ish volts at a full rpm charge if it's up around 16 or higher than that um, then it is definitely overcharging and that will cook your battery and the issue would be the regulator rectifier so a lot of people are asking about the charging system on these on this engine and pretty much probably all of them that are in these that are gas engines the diesel ones may be a little different um but you can see the black wires coming out of the engine cover here. Usually they're yellow, but on this particular stator, they're black. Those come from your stator and flywheel. The two wires directly come out of the stator. Those are the AC wires off of your stator that are going to be sent into the regulator rectifier to be converted to DC, which will then be sent out through the red cable here, which is connected to your battery through the solenoid. So that sends the charging voltage back to your battery. If you're having an issue with your battery not charging, um, the first thing I would check is this connection right here. First of all, make sure the red wire is connected to your solenoid. And then check this connector here to make sure it is hooked up. Because if you're getting voltage out of your stator going into the regular rectifier, but this is not connected, it will not charge your battery. These wires right here come directly from the stator. The stator is going to be sending AC voltage, not DC, AC voltage through these wires into this connector. So if you wanted to check that your stator was working correctly, you plug your multi multimeter into here so you could test for voltage there. And if you have 
that voltage, then you know that your stator is working correctly. I'm just going to go ahead and do a simple charging system test for the sake of this video so you can see how it works. I'm going to be checking the stator output voltage first. So I set my meter to AC voltage. I have the black cable grounded to the battery. I'm going to stick the positive lead through the back side of this terminal here to test one of the wires. So you can see with the engine running, running at the highest RPM, it's safe to run it at. It's right around nine volt, nine AC volts charging. So um, I would assume that's okay on this one. I don't. I haven't looked up the specific specs for this charging system, but each leg is getting about nine volts, so it is charging. Um, next, if you wanted to make sure that it is getting to your battery. Like I said, it goes through this red cable, which we'll assume that's fine. I'll just go check the voltage at my battery. And that is going to be DC volt. Because the regular rectifier converts it to DC volts. And to clarify, what we just did there, testing a stator, if you are not getting AC voltage coming out of there, or say it was a very low amount say it was like three ac volts or something then you would know there's an issue with your stator also you want to check your stator output wires for continuity of the ground they shouldn't continuity it's just a it basically means there's a connection to the ground and to do that you can set your meter to the beep setting the little symbol it has for that there basically i have my ground connected to the ground you can hear a beep Maybe there's a connection between the two. So it doesn't hurt to check your stator legs. Make sure there's no connection to ground. That would be bad as well, and that does happen a lot. No beeping, we're good there. Now I'm going to move on to test the battery to make sure that there is DC voltage coming to the battery to charge it. So I started it. charging at 14 DC volts, which is good. Um, it would probably go a little higher if I let it run a little longer, but I'm not worried about that. Mainly, you want to make sure that it's not down below like 12 and a half volts or um, extremely high, like 15, 16 volts, because then that would mean that your regulator rectifier is not regulating the charging voltage and that will cook your battery. Other than that, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty simple system overall on these machines. But other than those things we just went through, the only other things would be the ignition switch and the light switch and the hour meter, which I have taken off because I'm using it to power the fan, which I will explain in a minute. I'm not even going to go through everything on the key switch and the light switch because it's pretty self-explanatory. And if you get into those issues and you want a little more in-depth on it, you can just send me a message and I'll help you out with that. But basically you're your key switch is just getting power from this that wire coming off of the solenoid which gives you 12 volts of your switch to control everything as soon as you turn it to the on position you see i have my fans powered through the key switch but as soon as you turn that to the run position it sends power into the light switch and then obviously turn it on it'll send power out to the light um some of you guys may have noticed there was they had a wire harness dangling down in here and all that was was 
wires for extra lighting or whatever. I decided to use one of those to power this fan. <laughs> Come out of that. If you haven't found it, it's usually just dangling down in here, but you can pull it out and they have it taped up. But the wires that come out of that, you'll have a green with yellow, a yellow with white, and a black. The black is a ground, so you can use that as a ground for your fan. The yellow with green only has 12 volts when your key is in the back position. So that is what I use to power my fans. That's how I wanted to set up. I didn't even want to put them on a switch. I just want them running all the time. It's the same goes with the hour meter. It was also ran through the green with yellow wire, which means when the key the ramp station, send the power into the hour meter. So I elected not to use this hour meter. I don't like how that's set up. There's also a ground coming off of it, so I just use that also for this fan. Uh, I do not like how that's set up. I don't want it to be really you know, it's powering the hour meter counting hours. I am going to install a different style of hour meter that wraps around the spark plug cable and powers itself. That way it is only counting hours when the engine is running. And also with those style, you can use them to read the engine RPM because there is a max RPM on these engines. If you run them higher than that, these engines will explode. They'll overheat, they'll, they'll kind of run away sometimes too. So I'm going to use the other style of hour meter as soon as I get one and mount it right here in place of this. And I'll like it a lot better because it'll only be showing, it'll only be counting hours while the engine is actually running. And like I said, it will be showing me the RPM so I know that this engine is not over revving. And if you're judging me by these, I just kind of threw those together for temporary purposes. I just wanted to get out here and hook the fans up this morning. It's too cold to be spending too much time out here, so I will I will fix all that up and make it a lot fancier at a later time. I forgot to cover the yellow with white wire that comes out of that extra harness. I am not using it, but all it is, you can look at your light switch here. The yellow with white is powered by when you turn the light switch on. So the yellow with white goes up to that light up there. Also to every yellow with white on here, including the, the spare harness they give you. That's why I, I assumed it's for extra lighting because it only gets powered when that's on. I did not want my fans going through that. Sorry for the kind of lack of quality of this video and I didn't really get to go into things as much as I wanted to, but I just wanted to give you an overall um, view of how this was set up and hopefully that'll help you guys with some of your charging problems and stuff. I know there was a couple guys in the group that had some issues with charging when they hooked up their fan. And as you can see, I have fa two fans installed on this one, two 80 watt fans and it is charging at least 14 volts, probably more. So. Um, the guy that was having the issue where it was dropping way down That's definitely not normal and I would I would recommend to him to uh, do what I just did and start By checking your battery voltage with everything off obviously, you know if it's up around 12 and a half volts And I would move on to checking your black stator wires check the AC output of those See if you're getting the 9 volts that I was getting while the engine is running at a max RPM if you are getting the correct AC voltage from the stator, then you know that the rectifier should be putting out the voltage to charge your battery at correct rate. So there's a chance it could be your regular rectifier having issues. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. There could be a bad connection here that is causing a voltage drop or a bad connection there that is causing a voltage drop. Anyways, I hope that helps you all out a little bit. Sorry I couldn't get as in depth as I wanted to. Um, if you do have any issues or questions about anything that I covered there, just send me a message. I usually try and help people out when I have time. Also, if you haven't been in there yet, uh, it's not very hard to get in there. You just take these three bolts out, pull this plate up after you take your foot mat out, of course.